That's cool. Thank you, Megan. How are we this evening? Good. Good. Great. Maundy Thursday. Thank you for coming out. If you're tuning online, how are you going? Hello, welcome. My name is Dion. I'm married to Lisa, who you see mostly at the front here. I'm usually down the back. You don't know. But anyway, it's Easter Thursday. Um, Easter. We call it, Easter's probably not really the correct name. It's a, a newer name that's been given. But um, it's, well, basically without what happened on this weekend a couple thousand years ago, uh, Christianity as we know it wouldn't exist. Our salvation, our eternal life, um, we, I'm, I'm only going to hazard a guess here and say that we may still be sacrificing animals at altars and analyzing for our, to appease our sins, but, um, but praise God, he sent his son to die for us uh, on the cross, amen, uh, so that we don't have to do that anymore. We have this uh, freedom, uh, this grace, this... Um, Enjoying this life. Excuse my voice. I'm actually, today, I'm going to blame Lisa. She fed me chocolate coffee beans, <laughs> which are a really good idea at the time. But ever since, I've had this like niggled in my throat. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. So if I sound a bit husky, it's, it's just because of that. So I've actually got some um, special juice. I just have a drink of my vitamin C over here. Oh, I feel heaps better already. Rock and roll. <laughs> anyway, so this evening on this Thursday night, um, uh, I don't want us to get caught up in getting the exact times and the dates and everything right. There's a lot of different theories about, was it Thursday night? Was it Wednesday night? Was it Tuesday last week night? I don't want to get caught up. There's, there's a whole bunch of theories and different things, whatever else. What I want us to remember is, regardless of what day of the week it was, what time of the night, whatever it was, the event happened. Um, that's, that's the thing. The event happened. And that's what I want us to remember tonight as we go through a couple of things. And you may listen to this and think, oh, yeah, that's old news. <laughs> I, I only really picked up on this just recently. And I'm actually amazed that I did. I read through this scripture all the time. Not all the time. Especially at Easter time it comes around. Uh, and it's just in this, this last few weeks I really picked up on this thing. And I really want to share with you tonight um, what I've been showing. But have I, have I say that now? You guys are like, oh, you only just got that, Dion. Where have you been under the last... So, so anyway, uh, let me just pray before we start. Can we do this? Is that all right? Let's go to Jesus. God, we just want to thank you. We just want to come tonight with complete praise and adoration for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God, we remember this weekend, Father, what happened 2,000 odd years ago. Uh, God, that you sent your one only son to die on the cross for us, to take all our sin um, all our shame, all or everything that took and taken on that cross so that we don't have to suffer it. God, we don't take this lightly. We don't treat this weekend lightly. We treat it with the utmost respect and all that it deserves and the honour. And God, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for what you've done. We give you all the praise. give you all the glory. Holy Spirit, just help my voice hang out tonight. <laughs> In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You've got your Bibles there. I'd like you to turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 26. If you've got your phone, just scroll through there to Matthew, hit number 26, and it'll take you straight there. Um, quite right. So we're reading from Matthew 26, verse 36, through to verse 46. All right? I unbelievable how that works, hey? Um, so while you're finding that, I'd just like to set the scene a little bit. So Jesus has just uh, celebrated the Passover with his disciples, uh, they've had the meal, they've broken bread, um, Judas has taken off to go and do his thing, and, and we're going to pick up the story where the disciples and Jesus are going into the Garden of Gethsemane, right? which is basically like, um, oh, for lack of a better word, an olive grove sort of a type place, and, um, and Jesus is going there to, to pray. Um, and, um, and as we look at this, the, the whole concept of tonight that I want to talk about is we place, just in history, in times gone past, we play, and it's very important, place a lot of uh, weight on the death of Jesus and the, and the gruesome, horrible, um, uh, the, the torture, the flogging, the weeping, everything, we place a lot of weight on it, and it's just all good. There's a lot of pain happening in that. But I want to show you something tonight that we kind of gloss over a little bit, but it, it 
helps to set the story a little bit more, I think, uh, as we go through it. So I'm reading from the, um, the New King James Version, and um, we'll see how we go with this. Has everybody got it there? At home, have you got your Bible pulled out? Here we go. The prayer in the garden. Then Jesus came with them, the disciples, to a place called Gethsemane. He said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. I'm not sure how far away that was, but I'm guessing it probably wasn't too far away. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Just pause on that one for a second. He began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little bit further on, fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. Fair dinkum, guys. Said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time, Jesus went away and he prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. He came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them, went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. And he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand. And the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And at that point, the story changes and Judas comes and gives him the kiss. And and they go from there. So, that block of scripture is all about the prayer in the garden. And the reason that it stands that I want to look at tonight is Jesus was, um, was executed for his faith, his belief system, he came into the world and basically upended uh, everything that the religious leaders taught about, um, about God and, and, you know, always you know, Jesus comes to us like, no, love, love your neighbour. Um, no, no, this eye for an eye thing, no, that's, you know, I'm, I'm coming to take you away from that and take you to, to something different, something better. And, um, and that upset a few people and basically they wanted to kill him, he was a heretic, as uh, what they thought. And, and so the thing is, over the centuries after Jesus' death and resurrection, countless, probably, I don't know, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions, I don't know what the figure is, of people have been martyred or executed um, for their faith in Jesus. But you see these guys who take, that they're, they're executed or whatever else, and a lot of the time, yes, I'm sure there was fear involved, but you hear stories of like these guys singing hymns up until they're executed or praying or saying, you know, they're, they're anticipating what happens on the other side of this death. Yes, it's going to hurt, yes, everything else, but they seem to take it with such um, peace in their hearts and such tranquility of spirit and, and they're sort of like, we're ready for this. But here's Jesus facing an execution and he, he is like, like it says, he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. This is Jesus, the, the Son of God. It says in the Gospel of Luke, it says he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood, which is actually a true medical condition. Um, and it's, there's a couple of different reasons, but the, the, the main reason that it happens is they say it's fear and intense mental contemplation are the most frequent causes. And what actually physically happens in the body, I'll look this up, <clears throat> uh, and I could be wrong, so just, just stand by. But this is what I found. It says that around the sweat glands, there are multiple blood vessels which constrict under the pressure of great stress, and as the anxiety passes, the blood vessels dilate to the point of rupture, and it goes into the sweat gland, and then when it pushed to the surface like sweat, it comes out appearing as blood. So it's a true recognition. And as they say, it's caused by severe like stress and, and such anguish. And so, so Jesus is obviously under this anguish. Um, and it, it wasn't like Jesus wasn't expecting this because he told his disciples 
countless times earlier, hey guys, you know, the day is coming, I'm going to die. But I'm going to rise again on the third day, but I'm checking out for a while. Um, Jesus knew what, what was going to happen. But Jesus is also the person who, who lived his entire life um, uh, being mistreated. Uh, he was hated and persecuted um, because of his belief system and what he was teaching and showing people. So, so he himself, Jesus knew himself that what he's teaching is so far from normal that he was, of course, walking down this line of execution. So, so what was it about Jesus' death then that was causing this great agony, this great stressful sorrowful thing where he's saying, he's praying to the Father. Jesus is the perfect Son of God, born out of immaculate conception, lived a perfect life, survived every single temptation without sinning. And here he is saying to God, God, if it's possible, take this cup away from me. Further down in that chapter, um, he actually says to Peter, I could call 12 legions of angels to come and take it away if I wanted to, but he doesn't do that. So, so what is it? And the, the answer that we look into is in this one word, and it's the cup. He mentions the cup three times in his, in his prayer, in his scripture, in his praying. Um, God, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. So what is the cup? What is this cup that is, that is so thing? And if you, to, to, to understand what that is, so I did my bit of research into this, I love my research, love my history. And you've got to understand, so Jesus only had the Old Testament to work with back then. The New Testament didn't exist. It was being outlived right at that time. So he had to work off the, off the, of the Old Testament, the, the, um, the prophets and, and all this sort of thing. And, and back in the, in the good old days, or possibly even the bad old days, the cup was, was very often referred to um, as, as a punishment. Um, there's a, um, there's a guy, uh, Socrates, Socrates a philosopher, you know of him, like a pretty famous sort of a guy. Um, he actually um, had to drink his own poison out of a cup. It was a way of execution back in the old days. They'd mix up, uh, where is it on here? I wrote it down. Uh, hemlock. Hemlock was a plant. And, um, and he was, um, he was sent to death for heresy and corrupting the youth of Athens. Hey, jeez, I wouldn't want to be cutting the youth these days, gee. And uh, anyway, so it was a punishment, it was a form of punishment. And then Ezekiel writes, um, Ezekiel chapter 23, which if you don't know it, is probably one of the most explicit MA slash R-rated chapters in the Bible. It's very, very explicit. I showed Lisa some stuff the other day, Lisa was like, I'm like, yeah, this is in the Bible, darling. Read it later. But in that chapter... The prophet, he actually says that God's going to pour his cup of wrath out, right? And it's, this, it's wrath. So, so when Jesus is talking about this cup, he's talking about the wrath of God. And so for Jesus to be at this point praying, saying, God, if I take this cup, he's actually saying, if you can take this wrath away from me, do it. Because we all know that God can't look at sin. That's where it hit me. <laughs> but the thing is, Jesus took all of our sin, all of our shame, all, he took everything on us. And because God could look at it. And you think about it, Jesus had the most intimate relationship with God ever. He, had, he knew the Father like nobody else. He knew the, just the depth. He had his prayer life was just 100% spot on. And to be then in that position, walking into the garden, and all of a sudden realizing that God's turning away from me here because I am becoming sin. You know, in the Old Testament, when God poured out his wrath on the Hebrews or the Israelites, he was turning away from them. Because the presence of God can't be where sin is. And, he was, and God would turn away. And then he writes to go and do something over here, you know, down there. Oh, hang on, we mucked up. Came at, you know, it was a whole big cycle. Anyway, to, we can go on it till tonight. But, but the thing is this, is, this is the part 
of the story that I think we tend to overlook. Yes, it was excruciatingly agonizing, painful death, the crown of thorns being put on, being mocked, being spat upon, being whipped, the 39 lashes. Um, some movies like The Passion show that pretty explicitly. I'm surprised he was able to walk after that. And, uh, and then he gets, gets there and then they give him the cross. Now, I've got this bit of timber here, left over from Grant on Sunday. Thank you, Steve. This is, it's only, what, two, two and a half foot long, I suppose, maybe three feet long? Three foot long. Three foot long. Thanks, Leif. Leif's got the measuring tape out. Now, I'm, I'm not going to tell you this is the cross of Jesus, but it's a solid bit of timber because to hang a man on a cross, you could not, you know, we've got a cross up on the wall over there. It's not going to happen. You needed something solid. And so Jesus is whipped and then they've put this, this is only probably like the headpiece. He's got cross, I've got to go put this down, it's easier heaven for me. Um, but he put that on his back and walked out of the city where they nailed him to it. Yeah, that is absolutely terrible. Jesus wasn't the first person that happened to him. He wasn't the last. The Romans were very, very good at execution and torture and all those sort of things. But the thing is, his death was like no others because he carried everything with him. To that, and, and he had no one to take with him. You know, when... Um, I'm only, I could only guess, I could only speculate, but you know, when if people have been marred, executed, um, you know, they know they're going to heaven. We're going to be with Jesus. Yeah, Jesus, we can see, you know, um, there's a couple of guys, and I just can't remember their names. It was back in England, and they were burned at the stake. And then one guy looks at the other and goes, hey, be of good cheer, because tonight we shall light a candle that shall never be extinguished. You know, and so in that, he's completely at peace. He knows where he's going. Because the father is looking at him and saying, yeah, mate, come on. It's all right. It's going to hurt for a minute. Don't get me wrong. But we're coming, you're coming home. Whereas Jesus has taken this cup, taken the wrath of God on, as well as everything else he's got to endure after that. And that's, that's what separates the death of Christ from every other death in the world. There's never been a death anywhere like No one has taken on the sin the entire world being put away from God. What did he said on the cross? My God, why have you forsaken me? Straight out of Psalm 22. If you read Psalm 22, it's the first verse. My God, why have you forsaken me? Because he took all the sin on. And so we're going to take communion in a minute. If you, ever, if you haven't got it, go and, go and grab um, a portion thing. If you've got it at home, please go and um, get some biscuit or juice or something. Um, because we're going to take this, t- this meal together tonight. We're at the beginning of Easter. We're at the first, the first night, the Thursday night, and tomorrow we have Good Friday, which is where we remember the death of Jesus on the cross, and then there's um, Easter Sunday with the resurrection. Praise God for the resurrection. But I really wanted tonight, I have this thing, I don't know, it's just me, I don't know. I have this thing that I have a real awe and a reverence for the Last Supper. And the Thursday, the Thursday night, if it was a Thursday night, whatever night of the week it was, the Last Supper that Jesus took his communion, was, you know, what happened in that room at that night? Um, and, and the thing is, you know, in 2021, praise God we can meet like this. <laughs> Last year, I think I, I did something online, and it was really weird, because I'm not very good at the online thing. I don't, you know, at least I hate FaceTime, that sort of stuff. But... But, you know, here we are, 2021, we come together. But you know what? There is so much stuff on. You know, Easter weekend. Oh, let's put an event. Let's do something. There's so much stuff on. That's not bad. It's not bad. But it's so easy just to turn the Easter weekend into just another, a long weekend. Oh, yeah, we're going away for the weekend. And that's, that's not wrong. But, it, but it's so easy to forget and really take a hold of the... Of, of the weight of actually what happened that time. And so tonight, as we partake of communion together, I don't want just to be a moment of like, yep, biscuit, drink, go, we're done. Um, I want us to actually take a moment. And wherever you are at home, if you're watching, if you're in your caravan or in your tent, 
hotel room, wherever you're watching it, around the campfire, whatever you're doing, I just want us to take a moment just to acknowledge with all the greatest sincerity, the greatest reverence, the greatest awe of what happened, both on that night when he's in the garden, when he's praying, put yourself, put yourself, close your eyes, put yourself there, imagine what it's like. I don't know whether it was a, the moon was lit, whether it's overcast, I've got no idea. It was dark, it was night time. Jesus has fallen down and he's praying and he's stressed, he's anxious, he's sweating drops of blood. He knows that he's one of his best mates is about to betray him. He knows that. He knows he's about to be flogged. He knows he's about to have a crown of thorns. But he, know, he knows what he's about to endure. But he did it. You know, when Jesus started his ministry, he's baptized. Remember the story? He's baptized, and then the, um, um, the dove comes down and says, My son, whom was well pleased. And then at the start of his ministry, Jesus goes into the, into the desert and he's tempted three times. By the, the very start of his ministry. You come through to the very end of his ministry here, and here he is three times. God, if you can take this away from me, if there be any other way around this, God, if you, if, look, whatever, if you can take this away. But he doesn't. He takes all that sin, he takes all our stuff and he carries it and he lumps it on that cross and he drags that cross out to Golgotha, the place of the skull. And they lay him on that cross. You're in my sin, all there. They drive nails, not nails, spikes, through his hands and his feet, bursting arteries and veins and all that stuff I don't even want to think about, but it happened. And they lift this cross up and drop it in a hole. Bang. And he hangs there for a few hours. A couple of blokes either side of him. One mocking him, the other one saying, Hey, Jesus, remember me? He goes, Yeah, mate. I remember you. Everyone else is stuffed on me at the moment, but you know what? I got you as well, mate. I remember you. You'll be in paradise with me today. That's the caliber of the man that we serve. And it's so easy. It's so easy just to flog it off and like, yeah, yeah, it's Easter weekend and Jesus died. And thank God, praise Jesus, amen, hallelujah. He died and he rose again, and that's awesome. And it is. How often do we actually sit there and go, wow, man, man. God turned his face away from his own son so he could turn it towards mine. And overlooked everything that I've done. All my attitudes, which I'm guilty as charged. If you ask Lisa, she'll tell you. <laughs> Overlooks everything that I've done and says, I'm hanging here for you. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take that as well. I'll take it all. And I'll remember you. You'll be in paradise with me today. God, we just thank you, Lord. Words can't even comprehend our gratitude. 
Jesus, what it must have been like. We've got no clue in the world. We can just try and understand. We just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did. Thank you that you came to you. Thank you that you lived a perfect life so that you could take our sin. And God, we're about to partake of this bit of wafer and this bit of juice, Lord. On a Thursday night in a church in the middle of the Wimmera. God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Come on, why don't you just take a minute yourself, just thank him, just so much you love him, thank him. You know, maybe you've got to say, God, I'm sorry that I've, I haven't treated this with the respect that it's deserved. That's okay. God's not sitting with a stick going, well, it's about time you learnt that. He's saying, hey, no, come on, it's all right, it's good, come on. It's okay. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Come on, come on, lift your voices a little bit, come on. Tell him, God, we love you, Jesus. We love you, God. We thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. We thank you, God, that you sent your one and only Son to the cross, Jesus. God, I'm sorry, Lord, for the times that I haven't treated it with the respect that I should. I haven't treated it with the honor. I haven't treated it with what it's worthy of, God. Forgive me, Lord, of that. God, we thank you, Jesus. And God, we're going to partake of this meal. God, for this bit of bread is that resembles your body that was broken, that was smashed up, battered, torn apart, all for us. We take it and we just eat that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. God, for this bit of juice that resembles that blood that was spilt, God, that was spilled on that trail all the way out of Jerusalem, out to Calvary. The blood that stained that cross. God, we just drink that together now, remembering you. Thank you, Jesus. God, we do thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for your gift of eternal life. Because of your son, Jesus. And God, well, tomorrow we go to celebrate or remember, rather, the death on that cross. We thank you that on Sunday we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. That cross is empty. He's not on the cross anymore. He's risen again, God, and we thank you for that victory. But tonight, God, Tonight we remember, remember that garden, remember that, that anguish, that stress, that everything that you felt as you took the cup, you took the cup of punishment, you drank the poison that was meant for us, you took it for us God, we love you, God we just give you all the praise, we give you all the glory in Jesus name. Amen, 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 amen. Well, that's all I really wanted to share this evening. But um, thank you for coming. Thank you for tuning in online. And um, I hope you either learnt something or a new revelation or something or God's showed you something there. I know for me, it was like when I, I read it and I did a bit of research and I was like, far out, yeah. Why was, why was the death of Jesus so different to everybody else? And it's because he had to take this pain and, um, and he did it. So, um, so anyway, it must be, must be some because I've been making my matzah today, my communion bread, which if it wasn't COVID, we could all partake of some, but because of COVID, we're not supposed to, so we won't do that. But um, um, it's not that difficult to make if you're ever in it because I'm not a cook and um, it's pretty easy. It's flour and water, a little pinch of salt, and um, it's not overly nourishing, I must say. Um, but but it is it is very yeah very reverent. So anyway, thank you for coming out. God bless you. Um, enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the weekend. But let's remember.
Let's remember what we're celebrating. Let's remember what Jesus did for us. Um, you know, it'll be all like, oh, Jesus, God, no, no. don't have me like that. Uh, but yeah, let's just give it the honour that it deserves. And yeah, not even just this weekend, we think about every single day of the week, really. Um, but, uh, but bless heaps, thank you. We'll see you on the weekend and Sunday. Good on you. I think that's the all.